Right, just before the coffee break, and uh, just called Barry from, from Silver Hill. Um, Barry was previously with uh, Kerry Foods, been with um, Silver Hill for the last three years, and uh, is the international head of international development. Sorry, Barry, over Th to you. Thanks very much, Connor. I'm also the head of sales, so um, I suppose today. From my perspective, I, I'll take a bit more of a commercial spin on things, as well as the, the environmental bit. Um, for anyone who doesn't actually know where or who Silver Hill are, we're the, the only commercial duck producer on the island of Ireland. Um, we process about 60,000 ducks a week. And I'll go through just a, a little bit about the company. I suppose um, what I'll cover off today is what we do and our sustainability kind of credentials and, and uh, who we are, what we do. So I look forward to any questions at the end about the, the company. So I suppose before I go on to the next slide, the, the first thing I set myself a challenge when I agreed to do it, that at least one part of my presentation would be remembered by the delegates today. So uh, we'll, we'll go back to it at the end. Um, it's going to be about ducks. <laughs> so if you can have a think over the next 10, 15 minutes or so, what do you know about ducks or don't know about ducks? And I'm going to try and uh, leave you with something that you go, God, I never knew that. So in terms of the company, um, we, it's a family-owned company. Um, we're based in Emmyvale, County Monaghan, very close to uh, Monaghan Mushrooms, as uh, Donna outlined earlier. Uh, the Steele family own it. Um, it was founded in 1962 by Mr. and Mrs. Steele, who are still involved in the business today. They're in their 80s. They still come in every morning. But it's uh, now currently owned by their son, Stuart. And what we do is, I suppose, all parts of the, the duck. Uh, it, it's the only poultry that we do, specifically duck. And the majority of our business is actually uh, exported uh, predominantly into the, the Chinese uh, in the UK, France. Uh, the duck is specifically bred for Peking duck. Um, also, anywhere you see fresh Irish duck in the supermarkets, it's ours. So a little bit about the company itself. Um, it's our breed. We own the, the breed. Originally, it was a cross between a Peking duck and an Aylesbury duck, and uh, we've been doing it for over 50 years. We employ approximately 160 people in the MEVL area, um, and we do everything ourselves. We are fully integrated, so uh, we leave nothing to chance. We breed them, hatch them, farm them, process them, cook them, only our own ducks. Um, the factory over the years, I suppose, has been rebuilt a couple of times, but we've added bowling halls, cooking facilities, and uh, we also have a feather and down plant. So I'll cover it off in a, a few minutes, but literally the, the duck has very little waste, which kind of ties into our sustainability. Uh, as far as possible, we always try to use every part of the duck. Um, we have farms, approximately 1,000 acres, both north and south. Um, predominantly within a 30 mile radius of the factory, but we're literally on the border, so some of them are in Tyrone, majority of them are in County Monaghan. Um, over the last, I suppose, three years, we've won various awards, particularly uh, for the taste of the product and the quality of the product, the management of the company, and uh, our green, I suppose, credentials, uh, sustainability awards, and so on. So some key facts about the duck business in general. There are very few commercially available duck breeds left in the world. Um, a lot of companies are there, th their business is to breed ducks and dayos and sell them on to other companies. We don't. We keep the breed ourselves. So that's our USP. Uh, it's probably priceless at this stage because we haven't uh, gone down the route of trying to get it to grow quicker or you know faster or heavier. We want our duck to be very natural for, I suppose, the taste, the quality of the skin, and our Chinese customers want a, a, a layer of fat there for their roasting process. So that's what we've kind of specialised in. We were actually the first Irish or UK poultry or meat company to be given EU approval. We were the first applicant when we joined the EU for a licence. So our factory number is uh, 801. The reason there's eight was put in front of it, the Irish government didn't want the rest of uh, Europe to know they were that small, they had one factory, so they, they put an eight in front of it. Um, there are only today three duck producing companies left in the UK and Ireland. About 15 years ago there was ten, so it is very much a consolidated industry and it's getting smaller all the time. Um, and uh, there are no other duck producing companies in Europe that would have a cooking plant and a feather processing plant uh, attached to their factories. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the, the feather processing now shortly. 
In terms of our, our business itself, I suppose since 2010, uh, when I joined the company, the uh, majority of our, our whole duck business goes to Ireland, UK, and Western Europe, so France, Spain, Denmark, Holland, Germany, and Monaco. And that can be either what we would call oven-ready ducks without the head, or for the Chinese, they, they want the head left on the duck. It's, a, I suppose, a cultural thing for the Chinese. Um, when they have a, a dinner, they point the head at the guest of honour. So there's a whole, uh, I suppose, cultural element to that that uh, we're, we're, I suppose, very much involved with. Our cooked duck range, again, the, the same markets. Um, I suppose we add value. We have our own cooking plant. So if you see crispy duck and pancake, which would be a traditional Chinese dish, uh, that's our biggest selling retail line, and we sell that all over Europe. Um, the duck down, um, we process all the feathers and a lot of it is sold in bulk. So we sell container loads of uh, down to the, they go to Germany, to Poland, uh, to go into Armani jackets, into duvets, pillows and so on, all, all over the world. And then the offal. So as I say, there's very little waste. So like uh, the, in Belgium, we sell the fat and the liver of the duck to make pâtés. We sell gizzards to France to make a uh, confit of gizzard. Uh, Poland and Germany the same. In terms then of the rest of the world, um, we send out weekly a uh, cooked halal range of duck to Dubai, to uh, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain. We sell whole ducks to the United Arab Emirates. Um, we sell ducks to South Africa, to Singapore, Malaysia. Uh, the offal predominantly goes to Hong Kong. That's the head, the feet, and the necks of the duck. And then we also sell duck down to Japan. So I'd say 80 to 85 percent of our business is export, always has been. When I say we're a 100% integrated company, we, we literally do everything. So we own the farms, the farmers work for us, uh, we own the hatchery. So we have complete traceability on any of the products that we sell. So if you go into the local retailer and pick up one of our products, we can trace that back to the egg that it came from and then back its history 20 years previous, a bit like, I suppose, race horsing or that kind of thing. So we have very firm control over our product and, I suppose, the, wh where it comes from and where it goes. Uh, so you can see we, we have the full circle, we have the, our own hatchery, uh, we have our own breeding program, R&D program. Uh, the fertilizer we, we sell to farmers locally for, it's a fantastic natural fertilizer, very high uh, kind of growth rate in the grass. Uh, the farmers, you can see Kevin up on the top right hand corner there. Um, then the ducks themselves, we, we put them through the factory. The feathers are graded. Uh, we make our own duvets and pillows as well. Um, so a lot of the kind of local hotels and guest houses and so on put in orders for duvets and pillows, 100% Irish uh, duck down duvet and pillow produced in Emmy Vale. And then the cooking plant as well, obviously, uh, coming up now to this time of year is particularly busy. So when I say we, we eliminate every uh, part of the waste of the duck, anyone who's involved in sales, you know that all good salespeople should know their product inside and out. So th this was a fun day in the factory. <laughs> we had to taste uh, duck feet, duck necks, duck heads. Um, these are all delicacies in kind of China. If you go into China, uh, a supermarket in Hong Kong, Shanghai, uh, Beijing, you can buy a packet of duck tongues the same way you buy a packet of crisps here. Um, you'd be glad to know there's no plans to launch these anytime soon in <laughs> Ireland. The gizzards uh, we sell to France, uh, they're a confident, um, very traditional French dish. The duck liver and the fat, um, we sell, I suppose, the, the, the retail grade stuff into Belgium to make pâtés. We also recover the fat uh, and we sell it to companies that use it for biodiesel. And We're always looking at ways of, I suppose, recovering or adding value or to make sure that we're getting the best value for the, the byproducts. The carcasses um, go to the dog food trade, go to make stocks for soups and for other, I suppose, gravies, this kind of thing. And then I already mentioned the feathers. So the feathers are actually a very valuable part of the, the duck. Um, we have our own feather processing plant, which typically involves you wash it in a, what's more or less like a, a massive washing machine that you would have at home. It then goes through a drying process, and then they're graded into the different uh, grades. So we have like C-grade feather would be used for um, 
furniture business. Monaghan will be very uh, big in kind of furniture production, and over the years, uh, it's developed up the round. So for upholstery, for padding out, uh, the next grade up would be used for your cheaper duck down feather and uh, pillows, and then the high, the, the down is used for duvets and pillows. And then, as I said earlier, we ship it abroad. We we sell it in container loads to all over the world. So that's a little bit just about the company. Um, in terms of why we're here today, sustainability, um, I suppose, what are our credentials? We, we've historically always been very much about sustainability and you know, being, uh, I suppose, good citizens for the, the environment. Um, a bit like our, our neighbours, we also have a contract with VEU this year where for the next two years we have 100% green energy assured. So electricity will be one of our main, I suppose, uh, carbon generators. So now we're carbon neutral for the next two years and I imagine that will continue. In terms of Origin Green, I suppose uh, Sharon was here earlier telling us all about uh, Origin Green, and I, I think our kind of statement on the, the Origin Green website says it best. Sustainability to Silver Hill Farm has always been of the utmost importance, and we're very proud of our track record in this area. Becoming involved with the Origin Green project for us was natural progression, and we look forward to sharing the aims and the endeavours of this very worthwhile exercise with our customers. So Ireland has been at the forefront in producing quality food for decades, so this was another example of the leading food producers uh, raising the bar. So for us, it was a natural extension of what we were already doing, but it was nice to come under an umbrella organisation that now is, I suppose, spreading the good news all across the world. So in terms of our plan itself, our plan was over the next three years to reduce our energy and water usage in particular. Uh, so we based it on our 2012 figures and by the end of 2015 we wanted a 10% reduction in our electricity use and also, well, to date we have a 5% reduction. Uh, and the water, we wanted a 10% uh, reduction in the use of the water in the processing plant compared to 2012. That's currently a 4% reduction. The problem is that when we were doing the plan, uh, we didn't expect to just get the same growth that we have got. So we've grown 37% in production over that period. By the end of next year, we predict that it'll be 50% higher than it was in 2012. So those pesky seals, they're <laughs> interfering with our, our, our targets, but it's a nice problem to have in all seriousness. Um, I suppose this is the challenge that a lot of the companies are, are going to have, that when you do set targets, uh, you have to strive to get them despite you know sales growing and so on. So I suppose the, 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 the tip would be be realistic about expectations and uh, we, we still strive and I think we, we have a plan in place to, to get the targets, but it just becomes that much more difficult when the business is growing at that rate. Uh, I suppose a lot of the questions for the sales guys would have is what are the benefits of being in the program, you know, and from an uh, economic perspective, you know, is there any benefit to doing this? All I can say is that um, since we joined the, the program, these are a list of the, the customers that either we have secured business with or we were in talks, it's advanced talks of getting a business with them. So these companies are based in Denmark, Belgium, uh, South Africa and Germany. Um, I'd say we've secured at the minute probably two million euros worth of business and there's another million on the table that we're confident to get in. So, I'm not saying that they signed up for us, uh, for our business with us because of Origin Green, but it definitely played a significant part in the sales presentation and in the talks. Uh, we had the, the main buyer from Carrefour over to the farm, and all he was interested in was carbon footprint, energy saving. So a lot of the European retailers, this is very much on the, their agenda. And going forward, as Sharon said earlier, I think you have to be in the programme or else you're just not going to get airtime with these guys. Um, some other initiatives. Uh, sorry. Other initiatives, I suppose, to ensure sustainability is happening. Um, this year, we actually set up sustainability teams in the, the various parts of the, the business, and each department head has responsibility of communicating the Origin Green message to their team. Uh, we've set up, I suppose, targets for them to come up with ideas of how can we uh, save money or become more lean. Um, in the, the various businesses and then they present back to the management team. So anyone that has good ideas, we'll implement them and we'll give them a, a bit of a reward. Um, we're also now signed up with ASO 5001. I know we have uh, John speaking later on about it, so I'll, I'll let him talk through that. Um, now, 
as I suppose when we set our targets, we were already a very lean company. Like we would eliminate waste as far as possible. So uh, we have had various advisors in over the years, and they've already found us to be very lean. So it's about going that extra mile. Uh, if we talk about the low-hanging fruit, we've probably got all the low-hanging fruit that we already could have. So now it's about going that extra step to see how can you continue to uh, reduce your carbon footprint or to become more sustainable. Uh, we continue, we're members of Repack, um, I suppose that's a, an ongoing one. Uh, we're always looking at new technologies, way of reducing packaging, becoming more efficient. Uh, again, 2012 was our biggest decrease. We reduced our uh, re landfill by 15%, but as the sales grow, that obviously is always going to be a challenge. So it's about just offsetting one against the other, making sure that you take into account that any new business and new sales, it's going to affect your targets. Then more locally, um, making a positive uh, contribution to the community. Uh, we've put the far part of the farm aside for the local, I suppose, members of uh, staff and locals in the MEVL to use the allotments, uh, grow their own veg, and we encourage them to, to do this so you can see the, the fruits of their labour there uh, on the left-hand side. We also have our own horticulturalist, and we have a garden centre where Declan, basically, we, we sponsor seven of the local primary schools. We, we take them in and show them how to grow their veg. Uh, it's unbelievable that you know some kids were coming in thinking that potatoes came out of the supermarket. So we were trying to, I suppose, get the next generation educated in how to grow their own food, where the food comes from, how to be responsible, and you know that that's ongoing all the time as well. We've been doing that for a number of years. So, Barry, just two minutes. Perfect. Back to our previous slide. Um, so, as I say, I set the challenge. Um, I bet you just didn't know. Male ducks don't quack. Anytime you hear ducks quacking, it's always the females. Thank you. Great. Two great presentations, I think you'll agree, and a good wake-up call just immediately after lunch as well.